What's up, guys? It's King Daddy D Mac, and welcome, welcome back to another episode of Make It a Mod Sauce. That's right, that's right. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? I'm pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I just got back from a super cool space adventure with Slip Gator. Oh yeah, make sure to check it out, our, our rescue mission. He got stuck on the asteroid, asteroid belt last episode, so we went, we saved him. I think you guys enjoyed it. It was a pretty fun episode. But as promised, we're going to get back into Batania today. Last episode, I asked you guys to help me out with the name. We were, we were between, for our living wooden rock generator, we were between Lifematic and LG 9000, the living generator 9000. And still waiting to find out. That video only just went up, just went up soon after I'm recording. So still waiting to see what the results are, but it's pretty cool. I already noticed some people were saying that we should call it the LG O 9000. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Like the living generator over 9000. I like that, I like that. But we'll see, we'll see what the vote comes down to. So if you didn't vote last episode, make sure to go back and do that. In any case, today, what are we going to get to? Um, a lot of people have been telling me, we're going we're gonna to get back to right where we left off, but I'm kind of super excited. A lot of people are telling me I should get, what's it called, what's it called? The Soul Journeyer Sash. Probably said that wrong. It's pretty neat. This guy. So supposedly this will make you fly faster, jump higher, run faster, like just everything. Be able to walk up single blocks like stairs it sounds pretty cool now unfortunately we don't have everything you need to make this we need a rune of air a rune of the earth so why don't we go ahead and tackle that what do we need to get this it looks like we're gonna need a runic altar okay so let's go ahead and do that we should be able to afford it either the mana pearl or diamond which was just throwing a pearl or diamond in the mana pool and living rock which we got tons of so why don't, why don't we go and try and do that? Why don't we try and do that? Let's go into a little craft thing. Also, I want to make up, show you about this, mana distributor. Super important, super cheap, living rock, mana steel. Let's make one, and we'll talk about what it does momentarily. Let's go ahead. Where's our sash? Where's our sash? Oh, oh, no. Okay, recipe. I can remember this. I can remember it. It's like that, and then like that. Yes, yes, runic altar. Super sweet. Okay, so this is kind of like another crafting apparatus. And here's what this other thing was, this mana distributor. Basically what it's doing is when you have the mana squirting over to it, normally we would have it just go into one pool. Well, with this one, if you have one of these bad boys set down, it will basically, do we, do we have some more? If you put four pools around it and then aim the spreader, go into it, let's just grab. I've got more pools. Ham. Go bam, 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 bam. And let's aim this squirter from here to there. It will distribute evenly amongst all the different pools. Super cool. So it makes it handier than having to have just daisy chains of squirt, of spreader to pool than going down. This, this makes it easily distribute all the way. And that block's blocking it. Get out of there, block. There we go. Yay. Super cool. So anyway... Let's get this runic altar going for this guy. Where, where'd you go? I was so blind. I so blind. I know we just, I thought we crafted it. Did we not take it? What the heck just happened? Oh man. Did we set it down? Did we set down the runic altar by mistake? Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe we just did that. Mana distributor goes there. I'm such a derp. No wonder it didn't. Oh, 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 no wonder it didn't work. Oh man, um, this should be aimed at it. Let's just do it one more time, just in case. Bam. Is it working now? Yep, there we go. You can see the mana filled in. So pretty cool. Anyway, runic altar. <laughs> I feel so silly. Um, we can just set down. Pretty neat. So there's no like gooey towards it if you like right click on it or anything. It's one of those magic blocks. I wanna move it one more closer just so it looks prettier and in line. Cool. So it doesn't really do anything. Doesn't really do anything. Now if you click stuff on it, let's let's what happens if I click if I click a, a stake on it? Look at that. It flies around it. Isn't that cool? Let's see, how can I get it back? Can I shift right click it? If you shift right click, it'll give it back. Or if you just break it, it'll give it back. 
So anyway, let's click our Batania thingy on it. Super cool, talks all about it. I'll go through everything that it talks about. But um, yeah, basically, okay, that's how you craft it. Make 16 different types of runes. And it's also telling us some neat stuff that will help us be able to automate this later. I'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, here's all the recipes for the different runes. There's basically first the four elements. So you have water, um, earth, air, and fire. Okay, and all easily obtainable materials. Since we we're able to get mana steel, which was just throwing the iron into a pool, we're able to afford any of those. Then they have all the different seasons. So those usually will then take the previous runes from the four elements. And then, so two of those, and then a couple of other interesting stuff. So summer, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets into, ooh, mana rune. Okay, cool. Just other stuff for crafting recipes. Then they have the eight deadly sins. Lust. Gluttony. Greed. So pretty cute. Pretty cute ideas for it. But anyway, just using previous stuff. So it's kind of scaled. It's scaled in what you can do. So anyway, we need, we need for our little sash thingy. Where's the sash thingy again? We need to get air and earth, which is super convenient because those are both the first level, the first tier runes. They're the element ones. We need some leather, no problem, and then mana steel. Cool. So let's go ahead. I put out in a chest, and I already tested this out a little bit. That's why we have stuff. I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing before I brought you guys in. But we're going to need the air and the earth. So let's grab the materials for that. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. And let's set them in. Now, when I was talking before about having it be able to automate, let's just really quickly do this. It's saying if you have a comparator, ugh, I want to move this one over more. One over, I know. Making adjustments, making adjustments. Most of the Batania blocks will work with simple vanilla redstone. So if we aim a comparator out, it's not sending any signal, but it said, when it's accepting mana, it's going to become a signal of one. And then once it's ready to craft, it's going to send a signal of two. So when it's ready, it should put that this light on right here. That's just like, uh, in, it's just a lamp, just like a vanilla lamp, but it's colored. It looks pretty. Okay, so we have our materials. And let's go, okay, so three mana steel. One, two, three. Um, which one should we do first? I guess we can do this one first. So a coal block, a stone, and then it seems like all these do five. So then in that. So this should do the rune of the earth. Now it's not doing anything. If I go to put my wand on it, if I click it, okay, it's working, but it's not getting any mana. We got to aim one of these spreaders over to it. So it gets mana. And look at, see, you can see the little clock going. Isn't that cool? Now, I'm assuming if you had more spreaders put to it, it would work faster. So, that's probably the case, and probably when we do a setup. That may not be true, though. I haven't confirmed it yet. But look at that. It's almost done. It's almost done. See, it's almost green, filled up with mana. And boom, the light went on. So, that means it's ready to craft now. It's getting cool effects. It's green in the inventory. So, then, we can throw a piece of living rock on top. Bam. Oh. Okay. Bam. Bam. And then right-click it with the Wand of Forest again. So when you want to activate it for the craft to start, you click with the, for with the wand. And then to finish, you click with the wand. Awesome! Then you can see all the lights went off. And we've got our Runes of the Earth. Super sweet. So let's do the same thing. One, two, three. And then the air ones was string, feather, and carpet. So random. Boom, boom, and boom. So that's all of it. So now we activate with the wand. And I'm very curious for automating how we're going to do this wand clicking to activate it and finish it. I'm hoping that there's, I'm hoping there's something within Batania, but otherwise an autonomous activator would probably do the trick. I'm even curious, can you just throw the wand? Does that do it? No, that definitely doesn't do it. So you guys are going to have to help me out in the suggestions, any tips or tricks for that. Anyway, let's activate it. Now this part for sending out is going to be super helpful because once we got the signal going to here, if we were to put like a redstone torch or something on it, once it gets the signal, let's see, do I have a redstone torch? Redstone torch. Watch this. So right now the torch is on, but watch once it gets, I think this is how redstone, I'm so bad with redstone. 
All right, that didn't work. Hold on. If I did it like... Oh, man, maybe this block doesn't work with the torch. Anyway, that signal strength, once it gets to there, will be able to have something that will activate a crate system. Let's just build up a crate. It will work with one of these... Oh. One of these open crates that we learned from the other episode. And then maybe like a hopper or something. It will work so that we can have it. When it gets that signal, it will send something over the living rock over to here. Bam, it will fall on. And then the wand will go off. So that means this is automatable and all those items that went in will work just falling on. So that's super cool. This is what I'm loving about Batania is the fact that it is possible to automate stuff because things are annoying when you can't automate them. Anyway, 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 we've got our two runes. We've got the leather and the mana steel. So let's craft up this sash. Let's do this. You guys have been bugging me. Let's get it. Bam. We got it. We got it. So what does this thing do? Hold shift. Okay. So equipable in the belt slot. Okay. For the bobbles. So the bobbles menu in mod sauce. Here we go. And I think this is the belt slot right there. So right now let's look at what our fly speed is. Does it also work when you hold it in your hand? No. Okay. So this is how fast we fly. Now let's see what happens when we put on. We should be able to just right click it. So, right click. Bam! So much faster, so much faster. Oh, that's cool. Okay, and it should go, yep, yeah, right there in the slot. Now what happens here, if we're trying to walk forward, we run into this. Now, if we have the sash, I'm just gonna hold forward. Let's right click the sash. Bam, and now we can get up it. So that's cool, now we can walk up blocks. That's super awesome. We can now, let's see, before when we're jumping, Let's take it back off. So it affected our fly speed or run speed, being able to run up blocks. Now let's check the jump height. So right here, normally a Minecraft player can't jump that high. All right, well, when we equip the bobble, bam, I can jump. That is so cool. So I think that's everything that it does. It lets me run super fast, fly fast. It's awesome. It's definitely a keeper and it doesn't require any mana. We don't have to have anything recharging this. So that's super awesome. Definitely, definitely worth it. I love it. I love it, guys. Thanks for suggesting it. So anyway, let's get back into now seeing how we can automate this stuff. I think we're going to start off looking back at the mana because we never really talked about that. So let me get all set up to show you. All right. Work in progress. Work in progress. I'm experimenting with using AE now with these different things. We sh this should be able to automate. We'll find out a better a better, more complete, finished way to do it, and probably in more mass production too. But I wanted to kind of share my experimentation with you. So anyway, I'm trying to get first to the endo flame. So we've done that already in the episode. We've seen all the different dynamics of how you can do it. We've seen that if you throw in the materials for it in the hopper, and then go into, um, yeah, it goes to the hopper, to the crate, and lays out onto the a petal apothecary, we should be able to automate it this way. Automate it this way with AE. So I went ahead and I made the pattern for the endo flame already. So right in there, basically we need the bucket of water, the two reds, the two browns. We're gonna have to make a new pattern to do the mana petal, the light gray, and the seed. So we've got that all set, and I have the pattern for it right here. So that pattern will go into this interface like so and that should be able to craft that up now we have to get the pedal part of it done now that part to get the to get the pedals remember to get the mana pedals you just throw in the normal pedal into a mana pool and then it will change over so that's pretty cool i have this system over here and this is going to be able to do that do our mana ender pearls mana diamonds mana steel all that sort of stuff just by putting a pattern into here and then in the back here, we have an advanced item collector that will pick up all the fallen items. Now, I'll find a better way to do this. Yes, we'll end up making this a sub-network so it doesn't use up all these channels, but bear with me while we're, while we're figuring it out. 
This is still in the testing stage. Man, I love this sash thing being able to run up. It's so great, it's so great. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing my thought processes behind it. I like to share these things with you on camera just so that you can follow along. Oh, oh, I did that backwards. Dang it. <laughs> Let's do it again. All right, so it goes normal pedal equals the mana pedal. Cool. And then normal pedal equals the mana pedal. Cool. So now that we have both of these set in, and then I have this mana pool over here being sent over. So we have all that. What I don't know is I don't know if the interface can go directly into the crate. So we'll have to test that out. But for now, let's get these in. Let's make sure that this works. So we have those in. It'll interact with the hopper and then into the crate. And then this guy will pick it up. So what should end up happening right over here is we should be able to see us craft an endo flame and everything should work. It should have all the ingredients. I don't have any mana petals or anything like that in there. So let's do endo flame. It should show up in our system. I don't see it right now. Um, yeah, there it is. There it is. Endo flame. All right, so we can only craft one at a time with this system. So that's a limitation we're gonna have to figure a way around. But anyway, okay, we see the bucket, we see all those things going on. And did it already do this over there? And we can see we got an endo flame, so that part works. Now, why do I have another bucket there? It should have only done one bucket. All right, let's try it again. Endo flame. Start. Okay, you can see all those two were just made. And it threw it over here. Oh, you know what? That's just a graphic. That's an actually, it should have been an empty bucket. Let's see. So we have one empty bucket. This should become two empty buckets. Yes. All right, cool. And we already figured that part out over here. So now that that's automated, let's knock these guys out. And should we have the endo flame go back in the system or back into a barrel? That I'm not so sure about. We want to have... Gonna have to set up another ME interface coming over here to do it, but okay, we're gonna go there. Let's put down our interface. We'll just have the endo flame go into our normal AE system. I think that'll be smart because otherwise it doesn't know that it was crafted. So where are my item collectors that I just picked up? We didn't have room. All right, let me get this worked out. We'll be right back. All right, just had to clear up my inventory a little bit. So we have the item collector and I put into the item filter for it we have now endo flames in the buckets and then any other future things that we end up crafting in here we have a whole bunch of spots i think that's more than the interface even has so that should be good so we'll put that in there so empty bucket and endo flame then this one over here let's change this over this is going to be making the mana petals let's change this over to the red petal and to the brown petal Cool, and then we can put a filter there. This way, it won't pick up anything. If we, by mistake, <laughs> drop, like, uh, whatever down there, it's not going to pick it up and mess it up. So that's pretty cool. That should be all set. Let's craft one more just to make sure. Um, Yes, let's craft up one more to make sure it works. Next, start. Bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Awesome. And let's see. Endo flame in the system. Sweet. So we now have endo flames crafted up as long as we only do one at a time. That's super cool. So now let's get to the endo flames. Let's get to this little rigmarole that I have over here and let's set it up again. You guys gave me a whole bunch of cool tips and tricks about the endo flame. It does seem like one of the easiest uh, flowers to automate, but I'd like to go through all of them. Eventually all of them I want to have I want to become a Batania master I want to know all the tips and tricks for it I want to know how to do as much as possible So anyway, let's get a little setup over here. That's going to specifically power this pool. Let's also move this little thing Let's just do it today. We haven't done it. Oh Look at it. Oh, I love it. I love it <laughs> That Kingo thing is just so cool. Let's knock this out because this isn't necessary for right here and uh Let's get this guy all set up. 
All right, guys. So let's start learning about automating the whole manner production without being wasteful on materials, similar to like I did over here. Um, basically, the endo flames we learned they they work off of coal. They also work off of you guys recommended using coal blocks that it was more efficient, get better power output, and then it was also suggested blaze rods are another good combustible material that will work with it. So that's pretty cool. So we wanna be able to keep this mana pool full. Let's try and work out keeping this full so we can keep up the automation going, keep up the automation. So why don't we, let me see, we made an extra one of these guys. Why don't we grab one of these guys too? Cause we're probably gonna to wanna to expand upon this. Of course I said this is mostly temporary stuff, but we're gonna have our thing, our mana spreader being aimed at that. So why don't we go ahead and do this? We're gonna use another mana pool, bam. And then let's get the spreader guy going from this pool to that pool. So let's set a spreader down. Let's link that to that, cool. So now whenever this pool has mana, it's gonna be sent over to there, awesome. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? We are gonna wanna have to have, first of all, this and that and then we're also going to want to go like that okay so we're going to use a comparator the pools are able to recognize just like we learned over with the uh runic altar with send signal it also is able to recognize how full mana pool is so we put a comparator there cool and once we get mana into that pool it's going to turn on the comparator okay that's good enough now link back to there please okay Cool, so now you can see when it has even the littlest bit of mana in it, it then sends out a redstone signal and it turns off that torch. Now we only want it to send out a signal when it's full. Okay, so it's sending out a signal because it has a little bit. If we go like this, this is what the top signal strength does and it'll turn it off. So now that will only go on when this pool, pool is full. Cool. So next, let's try and just do this mostly with vanilla redstone for now. Do that, so it inverts the signal over, and then let's send it back this way. Let's put on a timer. We'll see why in a moment. So that's from Project Red Integration. And then from here, we're gonna do another block, another redstone signal. Okay, we're gonna bring our AE wire over, like dust. And then let's get a hopper and put our hopper right like there. Now, do you see how that flipped like that? That's how we want it because when the redstone signal is on, it locks the hopper, but then it shuts off for just a split second, just a pulse, just enough to let out. And we got to have this aim down. The crate's going to go on the bottom. Let's reset in that hopper so that it aims at the crate. So now let's look at what this looks like. See, it only sends out one item at a time every time it pulses. And that's exactly what we want. And then when this shuts off, the timer stops going and it doesn't send anything down. Now the reason for the pulses we're about to see is because the endo flames, they can't eat, the, they can't eat everything up, the fuel that fast. So we gotta time it so that it's, it's fitting to the endo flames. Cool. And see there, it's not full, so it's gonna be filling up. All right, so what do we need now? Let's take that off until we're finished. And we can probably actually do an on-off switch right there instead of a redstone torch. That might be useful. Um, okay, so next we need to get a squirter and we need to set out endo flames. So I guess for the simplest Simplest type of setup. We could just set the squirter right there. Let's link it, bam, bam. And we can start laying out endo flames. So the simplest setup would be just one. You could put it there, you could put it there. I think they're able to suck up to as far as, I suppose we can test this. That's two blocks, I think 
that might be the furthest away that we could set it. Let's find out. Let's turn this back on. And let's turn the timer up. Let's do it to like every 12 seconds for now. And so let's change. We'll try it with blocks of coal for now. So this right now, if we look at this flower, we can see it's set up to go to that squirter and that squirter goes to that pool. So now that's, th I guess, three blocks away. And that did it. And it's full and it's sending it back over. Cool. Now what if we did one further away? Let's see if that's too far. Let's see if it can eat it. Is it able to eat that far? Don't look like it. It's able to link up to the spreader, but it's not able to recognize the fuel that far away. All right, what if we add in more? Oh. And this is already getting into ridiculous amounts of mana. What about there? Is the squirter able to keep up? Oh, he's full! He's full! So, as you add in more flowers, you end up wanting to add in more squirters. Now, if I wanted to add in more squirters, more mana spreaders... I watch too much Slipgator calling everything squirters, huh? Dang red thing. Let's hurry up. And then let's assign this guy to that. Cool! And now this should keep this mana pool full at all times for our auto crafting. Oh baby, oh baby. And of course we can compact this way more if we switched off and used different types of redstone from the mods, but I think for the most part this is pretty good. This is pretty chill. I'm digging it. So, let me see how much time we have left and let's see what else we can get into cuz I'm I'm excited. This is there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Looks like that's going too fast. Let's turn this to maybe like five seconds. Let's see how five seconds does. All right, guys. So it seems to be working well. It's at least doing the job that we have set out to do. If you want to give me any tips about these, definitely, definitely feel welcome to. And I'll play around with different setups to see what's actually the best. But for now, this is sweet. We've got everything filling up. We've got extra mana pools to play with. And everything's all automated for our system that is currently, I just set up pearls, the diamonds, and the mana steel. So I thought it might be neat. Let's really quickly just start to check out a new flower. I'm going to take a break from those guys until I come up with a better setup. But next is the hydrangeas. These guys are pretty neat. Um, it still looks like it's probably a beginning level flower. And I've been going based off of what the crafting recipes are. Whatever doesn't take one of those runes tells me it's probably not that great of a flower. But... It's still, I don't know, who knows? You never know. So with this one, it's pretty neat. It pretty much just runs off of water. Yes, water. So similar to the day blooms and nightshades, that's like pretty much free, easy power. You don't have to put in any materials. I think this should be pretty neat. So why don't we get this automated? This should be real easy to set up. We need one blue and then one mana cyan. So I should be able to set those up super quick and easy in our system. Let's go ahead and do that and test them out. Alright, this should do it. Hydrangea, come on. Bam! You can see him all popping out over there. It's going in, it's going in, it's going to do it. Yes! It did it! And it should be in our system. Sweet! Oh, that's super cool. That is super cool. Alright, so we've got two of them. i got to craft up two more. And then let's try the setup. Oh man, so we're over at Kinko for a second. I was having problems somewhere in the automation, and this is driving me nuts. Mariculture has yet again, I don't know how it does it, but somehow the mod just like takes over this whole bucket thing, or our pack just doesn't recognize it, and then it changes it. Instead of that should have been a full bucket, it becomes a freaking water droplet, and it's driving me mad. I'm going to request, I want to know what you guys think, but I don't use Mariculture. I don't know of anyone on the mo on the uh, server that really uses it. I don't really care for it. I really don't see what it can do that's that special that some other mod can't do. I'm not, I'm not cutting on the mod itself. I'm not saying it's a bad mod. It's a very intricate, cool mod. I might have used it. But the fact that 
it's ruining the thermal expansion thing. I don't know if it's even Mariculture that's doing it. I'm just assuming. But it's driving me mad. That's all I'm trying to say. Little rant. Little rant. Little mad. And it keeps on doing it. So I really wish someone could address how can we fix that for good. And if we can't, I just assume Mariculture get pulled out of the pack. Just saying. I hope that there's another way, but... Just saying, it's so frustrating. And I know Jassassin has tried so many times to get it to work properly. And it, it gets fixed for a little while, and then it doesn't. Anyway, let's just get this going. <laughs> mean rant, mean rant. I, I always feel so bad, and I feel bad. I'm not trying to be mean to anyone. I love mod authors. They are amazing to spend their time, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just yelled at the mod, but hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get things to work the way you do them. So if there's another way, let me know, but it's frustrating. Okay, so we got all the water in, all pure source blocks now. Cool. Ooh, did you see that? That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> that is the cutest thing ever so basically you just got to have a setup that has like infinite source blocks that is so cute all right so let's get a mana spreader down <laughs> that's so cute <sighs> let's put it in the middle i know this is gonna make it not infinite source blocks anymore i don't think if i do that wait wait No, that is, even with that there. Okay, that's cool. We don't need that block there, but... All right, so then we can put that there. Mana. We're going to have so much mana, it's, like, not even funny. Like, so much. So much. Because we're just... We're, we're figuring out all the ways to make mana without, like... I don't know, without really doing much. So hopefully this will work. Let's aim this to that. Oh, to that. Was that right? Okay, good. That's aim there. Like, we're not using our mana yet. Don't worry, we're gonna get into that. I'm just... I'm trying to wrap my head around all the different things you can do with this mod. And this is this is the way I like to go about it. Alright, and... Oh, we gotta... We never automated the pool. It's just so much to do. So if you guys think I'm going too slow... If you think I'm going too slow, let me know. But this is... I'm, I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun... Let's knock off one of those two. Like, just... This is my favorite part of Feed the Beast, is just figuring out this stuff. AE, though, is just... Man, it's my favorite mod. It really is. That and Extra Utilities. Got it! Sweet! And then we gotta, of course, put it into here as well. Already running out of space on the filter. It's crazy. Alright, so... Let's see how fast this is filling them up. I would assume this one's not that fast because it's just, come on now, free water. This is probably one of the slowest ones or probably, I would assume, maybe like just a, sh a step up from the day bloom. But I don't know. It could be pretty fast. Yeah, look at that. It, it's pretty slow on the mana. It's not too crazy fast. The spreader's not getting overwhelmed. But man, you could get a lot of these. Now, I would imagine this would probably cause a little bit of lag. Only because it looks like those are block updates every time it does it. I would assume. Do I have the detector guy on me? Let me just see. Block update detector. Alright, I'm willing to bet right here. Or right here is a block update. Yeah. No, it's because I just set it down. Oh, I don't know. Is it going to do it? You going to update? Oh, can it not? Oh, there we go. Yep, block update. So if you had hundreds of these, you'd be getting tons, tons and tons of block updates. And while that's an awesome looking effect and sound, you just got to be wary of that. I'm curious, do these guys cause block updates? Let's see, can I set you? Let's see if that causes an update. Yeah, see, whereas these guys aren't causing any type of block update when it's going there. It would also be interesting to see, does this cause block updates? 
because anything that causes a block update is going to hurt like a lot of stuff. And I think that might have been why Slip was having problems with these things before, but that got fixed. The mod author is really cool, really responsive. Ethan already tweeted me about saying that you could automate everything. Such a I love mod authors that are really engaged with uh, the Let's Players that are using their mod and people using their mod. It's always a cool thing to see. Anyway, I'm starting to rant, and I think that you guys need to help me. Let me know the pace we're going, if we should hurry up faster. But in any case, we got most of the automation done. Um, I think we can probably start to work on the base area out of here. You can see we're already getting pretty crowded. I was thinking of maybe doing like a floating island or several floating islands for that. That's one idea. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, trying to think what else. Or we could do like a big power flower like we did a couple seasons ago or some type of other design. I don't know, but I'm thinking floating, different types of floating islands would be super awesome for a Batania base. So let me know, let me know. And if there's any other super cool items such as this that you want me to get to sooner than later, let me know in the comments. So a lot of stuff. Let me know, guys. Let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to help support the channel, please remember to leave a thumbs up because it does help me out oh so much. If you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, don't forget to do that so you can be first to watch the episodes. And other than that, I think there's only one thing left. And you know what that is. It's a big old peace out. <laughs>